Y'all, don't you just hate when you record a video and um, yeah, there's no sound? Yeah, I just did halfway through. I'm so glad I only got up to the first three, but like now we gotta backtrack and redo that. I'm so annoyed. All right. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl presents Renny the Love the the eh. Yeah, let's try that again. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Princess Renny here and I hope you're doing well. On this channel we talk about Christian faith, lifestyle, as well as natural hair. Today's gonna be a bit of a lifestyle video because occasionally, sometimes, I throw in a little bit of career advice and you do not want to miss this video. If you're new here, make sure that you click the subscribe button below. Also click the bell button so you're always notified whenever I post a new video. Also remember to give this video a thumbs up if you like it, comment, ask questions, let me know that this is something that you're interested in and um, I got you. I definitely would want to give you guys more of what you're looking forward to seeing. Yeah, let's get right into the video. Alright, so if you're not new here, you've been on my channel, a lot of you guys already know that I am a teacher. I'm an elementary school teacher and this previous year I taught third grade. Um, but being a teacher is definitely not an easy job it is rewarding sometimes um but it's something that a lot of people i see are interested in doing and i want to give you guys some reasons um about the cons of being a teacher so here are 10 reasons not to become a teacher they're in no particular order so we're just gonna get right into it okay so reason number one is you should not become a teacher if you like kids and i say this because a lot of times people maybe babysit kids or you're around them because you have cousins and younger siblings and stuff like that and you're like yeah kids are great we have fun all the time i like kids i want to become a teacher and that's not a reason to become a teacher because there's another side of it right where it's like sometimes they get the lesson that you just taught sometimes they don't sometimes they call out sometimes they don't follow your directions sometimes they do so there's always that like um push and shove or like imbalance sometimes or balance i should say but like the good and not so good um so because of that i say that being a teacher requires you to not just like kids but to love them you need to give them that unconditional love because there are days they'll do things that are concerning or embarrassing or you know you may feel a type of way about what they do or what they say but at the end of the day understanding that tomorrow that's a blank slate whatever happened yesterday is in the past and that's it um and being able to move forward and still show that kid in the same vein that i'm um I'm letting you know what you did is wrong and I'm like letting you know what the consequence may be depending on what the actions are like I still love you and I still care about you and if something was happening I would run skip jump do whatever it takes to make sure that you're safe because at the end of the day I don't just like you I genuinely love you right it's the reason that you show up to work every single day because it can get really really hard do not become a teacher just because you like kids it takes a lot more than that reason number two you are a control freak or you like being in control you like when things go your way as a teacher this is my fourth year and I've learned this lesson the hard way because my first year as a teacher they've taught me to envision my classroom envision what I see kids doing envision my lesson what I see happening in the lesson and to be honest sometimes the kids throw a wrench in that like it doesn't always work out exactly the way that you envision it because they might understand the lesson and then you like well skip all of this stuff we need to start with something else right or um they're taking a really long time to understand it and now you need to take a few steps back and really dig deeper and like figure out how you can get them to where they need to be or there's times I meet with the kids in the mornings and we talk about what the day is gonna look like yes we're gonna have this and we're gonna do that and etc but someone's sick someone's out they don't have this lesson today they don't have that like this class is not happening and um, you know you have to be able to pivot and find a way to still give kids the students that security that like well it didn't work out but it's fine I'm still here we're gonna figure something else out and we'll still have fun we'll still make it through the day um but yeah sometimes the kids are just tired sometimes they're just like 
bored. Sometimes they just don't get it. And you have to be able to figure things out without being the pouty child now because things didn't go your way. If you love when things go your way and you get upset or annoyed when it does not, you probably should reconsider becoming a teacher. Reason number three, you are impatient. Do I really need to explain this in depth? Like you are impatient when it comes to children following your directions or understanding your directions or getting the lesson or just anything in general. It is going to be really hard for you. You will be stressed out because at the end of the day, children will listen majority of them but there are some times when they just don't want to or they just don't or things just don't go that way and because it's taking a really long time for them to understand or for them to follow your directions or for them to just get it whether it's a life lesson or a um academic lesson um you have to be patient because you're dealing with different children and they all learn differently and they all react to different stimuli differently so you have to be patient if you lack in that area please reconsider being a teacher reason number four that you should reconsider being a teacher or should not become a teacher altogether is that you have trouble taking constructive criticism hear me out your boss gives you constructive criticism your friends may give you constructive criticism your co-worker may give you constructive criticism your parents your family even the kids will give you constructive criticism. And the thing about kids, they would give it to you unsolicited. You didn't even ask for it. Well, Miss Sam, you know, like, why are your edges not done? You gotta like, you know? <laughs> I'm laughing because it's real. Kids come to you and like any little thing, like, they will tell you but they will also tell you when they're bored they will also tell you when they like something and they don't like something and as a teacher as the adult as their role model you should be able to take that and figure out how to tweak it to support that child because at the end of the day they're with you for those 10 months right and you gotta figure out one way or the other to reel them in and keep them there and they're gonna give it to you. I find that constructive criticism from children is beautiful because it makes our classroom environment an actual community. So there's times that I ask them like, what do you think we should do next, right? Like, these are your options. Um, these are things that we can do in the classroom. What is it that you guys like? Let's vote, let's etc. So they feel like they have a little sense of autonomy and their voice is heard and they can bring concerns to you because you will be the one to be like, all right, I got you. I'm going to address that, you know, and, and we work together. Um, so I love that about my classroom because scholars feel like they are empowered, empowered. <laughs> They're empowered to advocate for themselves and advocate for their learning so that we can have the best classroom environment possible. So constructive criticism, if you can't take it, probably shouldn't become a teacher number five do not become a teacher if you want to be rich teachers are being a teacher is the most underpaid underrated job out there i feel like personally i'm a teacher i'm biased it is what it is but you do not get paid to the extent based on all the things that you go through within the school year um the teacher salary starting salary is not that great and it helps you pay your bills and it gets some other things done probably sometimes you're penny pinching and trying to make it work but um if you're trying to get rich and like ball out and go on all the trips and vacations and all that stuff you're gonna need to find a side job or consider a a totally different job altogether because you're not gonna be banking on the millions just by being a teacher just being completely honest if you want to get rich and you want to have this luxurious life you're gonna have to be really good with budgeting right 
but you're not gonna get rich just being a teacher. You're gonna need to find another job, you're gonna need to find some other things, some other outlets. Um, but I feel like as a teacher, I do have the luxury when it comes to my time in the summertime or during breaks when the kids are off. Like that's my luxury. I get to relax, I get to unwind, I get to recover from you know the season that we went through that rewarded us with this break so um yeah do not become a teacher if you try to be rich rich okay it's those two are not tied to one another okay it's just it's just not okay number six you dread standing for extended periods of time this past week you know we're unwinding it's towards the end of the school year i'm not really teaching you know so um i caught myself standing every time i speak to the children and i'm like what are you doing this is not a lesson you're having a conversation with them you don't need to stand they can hear you um <laughs> but during the testing season as a proctor you're standing for like two to three hours you know when you're teaching them and you have lessons back to back to back you're standing during that time like that's just part of the job and a lot of the times like i'm not even halfway through the day and i meet my stand goal because i'm standing for so long like i work out at work and then i go to the gym and it's like well i already met all my goals for today so what am i really doing you know but uh yeah it's a workout and i say that all the time like this is my gym before the gym and that's just really what it is that's what we sign up for um when you become a teacher you will always be standing reason number seven you should not become a teacher is you get annoyed whenever you have to repeat yourself ha 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 i'm laughing at this because um yeah i am always repeating myself take this video for instance i recorded part of it and you didn't even hear it sometimes with children you say all of these amazing things you're like oh this is an amazing life lesson and like i'm really getting through to you and the kid is staring you in the face and has no idea what you just said yeah if you don't like repeating yourself do not become a teacher you have to be patient yes but there's times a lot of times i even say things i'm like okay my expectation is that you are paying attention while i'm speaking yes and this person's paying attention that person's paying attention that person amazing we're all paying attention right like i have to do things like that to make sure that in case someone didn't hear me say you're paying attention because I called out someone else that is doing the thing that I want, like positive reinforcement, and I called out someone else and I have the positive reinforcement, and someone else and I have the positive reinforcement. Whoever didn't hear it the first, the second, or the third time, hopefully heard it the fourth time so that they're back, they're paying attention, they're listening up to everything that I am saying. But that just comes with the job. Like some kids hear it and it registers and they understand and it sticks with them. Some of them hear it and it's just like, what? Um, some of them hear it and forget it the next day. Like different children, you just gotta be understanding of that and be okay with repeating yourself at least twice. At least. Okay. Another reason you should reconsider being a teacher is you care about kids liking you back you want them to like you back like you love them and you're like yeah you gotta love me back i mean i do that with a lot of i'm like you better love me but you care about it to that extent that you will go out of your way to make sure they're your friend you're trying that hard to be friends with children that are at least 10 years younger than you like how does that make sense don't you have adult friends what are you doing <laughs> no it's not about children liking you back and being your bestie um even though i do have some besties i see you bestie i see you looking at this video but um if you care about it that much kids see right through that and they're like okay you're trying too hard i don't like you like automatically it's a turn off for them they're like i don't like you like that's not that's not it no 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 stop trying so hard um <laughs> or like you're trying to be their friend and then when it's time for you to give them a consequence but we're friends we're friends what are you doing you know like no they should know you love them without you trying so hard to be in their group they should be trying hard 
to impress you, okay? That's how it should be. You shouldn't be trying hard to impress children that you see every single day and you expect to follow every single one of your directions and be with you 100% of the time. Absolutely not. It does not make sense at all. You should not try to be their homeboy, homegirl, whatever it is. You should build those relationships and get to know them and see the things that they like so that maybe you do more of that or incorporate it into your lesson, but not because you want to be their friend, but it's because you genuinely care about them. So you don't care about being their friends, but you care about them like the whole child not just academically but like their personality things that get them excited you know things that they do on the weekend outside of school extracurriculars like that kind of stuff absolutely show um an interest in it and genuinely be interested in it because that's how you'll build that relationship with them but it's not about friendship you're their teacher not their friend don't do it okay so you about like, yeah, let's go here. Let's go to the park. Let's go have fun. Let's do that. You should probably become a babysitter or a nanny. Do not become a teacher because it's, it's just, it's going to be stressful for you. Don't do it. Oh, this one is going to hurt some people because I've also said this sometimes, but do not become a teacher if you do not like communicating with adults. Yeah. Because the kids are in front of you in your classroom doesn't mean that you might not have a co-teacher that's in your room or shadowing you or learning from you. It does not mean that you won't be communicating with your co-workers who are also teachers on the same team as you. Your boss, right, that's also in the same school building, you will be communicating with them. The parents, oh my gosh, I think my parents have a love-hate relationship with me because I'm always communicating with them to the point it's like, okay, Miss Sam. Okay, <laughs> but uh, yeah, you've got to be communicating with the families because they need to know what's going on with their children, whether it's like they got a head bump, they have a friendship that's no longer a thing anymore. They're excited about this weekend and they happen to tell you like you have to show that that you have interest in um the child and that you care about the things that they're doing so you would communicate with the parents because you have to build that relationship because once you build the relationship with the parents you're completely on board like you need them to practice doing x y and z got you like you are giving additional resources to help the child at home they got you you have a party that you want parents to bring like snacks in like you don't need a lot but like they can bring it in amazing like please build relationships with adults because your life this year i'm gonna keep it a buck with you this year was really hard for me because for majority of the school year i was the only teacher in the room and i had ranging from 25 to 32 children in the classroom and i had everything you name it right um in regards to like personality in regards to like the personality of the children and the adults and so on and if it had not been for the relationships that i built with the families with my leaders with my um co-teacher not co-teachers my co-workers it would have been hard harder for me right but because i built those relationships i was able to call up someone and say okay i need support with x y and z and someone will come running or someone will give me that resource to help and yeah we made it to the last week of school so that says a lot okay building relationships with other adults is so important because whether it's like a PowerPoint presentation or a newsletter that you're sending to families or an idea for a celebration with the children or, as I mentioned before, the support that you want them to have at home or even like learning more about the child so you can support them in the classroom. Like mom, dad, auntie, uncle, grandma, what works at home that I can use in the classroom? Like all of that has to do with you communicating with, the, with adults. If you don't like communicating with adults, it's gonna be real hard reconsider being a teacher okay and last but not least do not become a teacher if you're not willing to work over 40 hours 
Listen, work-life balance is really, really important. 100% agree, right? But there's gonna be some weekends that you will have to give up. There'll be some evenings or some early mornings that you would have to give up just to get some additional resources for children, just to support families, to go to their event. I mean, that's technically not working, but you're not required to go to that football game. You're not required to go to their church um, activity that they have, their church event. You're not required to do any of these things, but to be a genuine teacher that's building relationships with these families and these children, you might be invited to that and like take that as an honor. Like, what, you wanna see me outside of the 40 hours that you already see me in the school building? Yes, if I'm available, yes, I'm gonna be there. Um, you want to have additional research, like this lesson didn't work out well for you, but you're not willing to do the research. You're not willing to check and see what other resources you can use to help support your the children. Like, whoa. So what, you're just gonna work within those eight hours when you're in front of children? You're not gonna do like reread your lesson plan and make sure you understand what you're doing. You're not gonna tweak lesson plans to make sure it supports this child that needs that additional support. You're not willing to do some tutoring in the mornings or in the afternoons to help support children. Like, I understand work-life balance is really, 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 really important. It's important to me too. And like, that was a pain point for me in the past three years as a teacher. But understanding how to balance that time with like, I am giving this additional time to my job so that I can have it easier when I'm in front of the children. But also like, hey, my friend invited me out to this brunch, dinner, celebration, whatever. And I'm going to make sure I show up for them too. It is really, really important to figure out how you're balancing your work life, right? But at the end of the day, there's going to be some weeks that you're working more than 40 hours. Majority weeks, you might be working 43, 48. I don't know. But you have to be real with yourself. Um, a child is picked up late and maybe you're still with them for a bit and you're building that relationship and you have to call the parents. You have to remind parents about stuff. It's just like, it's a lot. It is not an easy job to be a teacher at all. And I want to stress that it is not easy at all, but it's really, really important for you to understand that is a rewarding job because when you get the love and the support and the joy and all of that, and the child is like, oh, that makes sense now. Like they get really excited when something clicks. Yo, I wouldn't trade it for the world. So if any of these things resonate with you either change your perspective or reconsider being a teacher i have so many more but i'm gonna stop here at number 10 but just wanted to be completely honest with you that teaching is a rewarding job and i definitely am interested in doing um a video about like 10 reasons why you should become a teacher if you're interested in seeing that definitely give this video a thumbs up and comment below so that i know um and if you want to see other reasons you should reconsider being a teacher certain things that you may have questions about definitely leave a comment below because i definitely want to be able to help you guys out i hope this video was helpful i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did give it a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe to the channel below. Click the bell button so you're always notified whenever I post a video. And I will see you guys on the next one. But yeah, anyways, thanks again for watching. Be blessed, spread love, and stay beautiful inside and out. Bye, guys. My nails are cute, aren't they? I like them so much. I keep playing with them.